G'day there everyone, Daniel Anderson here. Now there's a little hidden gem when we're using content types in SharePoint libraries that I want to go through with you in this video. Now we all know the power of and the importance of content types and we can create views on the metadata in our libraries, uh, but there's a little hidden gem when we're adding content uh, types to our libraries. So you can see here that I'm in a SharePoint site. I've got my control documents library. It is a blank vanilla document library that I have just created. Now I am going to add a content type or a multiple content types to this library. So we can see that I have got a couple of content types that I have got published. I'm going to add those to my library. Now if you want more details about content types, how to set them up and that type of thing, um, I explain all of that in my lessons inside of my private membership called SharePoint and Copilot Mastery. So if you want to head over to danielanderson.co forward slash mastery, you can join that exclusive private membership there too. So these are now be, these have now been added. Now when I go to my new menu, I can see that I've got three content types, the out of the box document one, and the two that I've just added. Now as a best practice, because I don't want users to use the out of the box default document content type, it hasn't got the metadata that we want. So I'm going to jump in here uh, and I am going to delete this content type. So that now removes it from use. Now I've also now only got my uh, two content types policy and branding and identity. So now I am just going to um, edit this doc, edit this content type first because um, I just want to add a couple of spaces for readability, all right? So we'll change this, we'll go to name and description and I'm going to change this to brand and identity and we're good to go, all right? So now we've got our library set up, we've got two content types, um, this hidden gem, what is it you may ask? Well, when we add our documents to our document library, which I'm going to do right now. So let me just grab a couple of demo docs here. We'll just add a few, I'll just select a few and I'll drag them across and dump them in this library. Now to make this nice and easy, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show or hide some columns. So I'm just going to say, show me the content type uh, and we can see the default content type is the policy. But what I wanna do is I wanna maybe select a few of these uh, just for demo purposes and I'm going to select these and I'm going to say these are branding and identity documents. Now you can see that I get the actual, when I change that content type, it flicks over and I get a new form with all the metadata associated to the branding and identity content type and not the policy content type. All right, so now I've got these ones set. All right, so I've got these ones as branding and identity and these ones as, as policy. Now to make this uh, even more usable and user friendly, it would be great if we could have some different views based on content type. Now, if I go to all documents, what we can see here is that because we've added our uh, content types to our library, we don't actually need to go and create our specific views for our content types. These are automatically created for us. If I jump into Copilot policy, look at these columns. They're the columns that are associated to that content type of uh, Copilot policy. Same thing happens. If I flick over to branding and identity, you can see that I've got all of my uh, columns that have been associated to branding and identity. Now you'll also notice, and here's a little trick, that, uh, or a little gotcha, because I changed the name, this view here um, needs to be changed, all right? So you can see branding and identity. If I, I'm gonna change this name here as well uh, for the view name, but if I come down to here, you can see that the content type isn't named this anymore. I've changed the name to branding and, and then if I hit okay, that will fix that view up, all right? So now I've got that there. But when we add multiple content types to our library, it automatically creates those views for us. We don't have to add any of those columns. It automatically adds it there for us, uh, the columns for that, uh, for that content type as well. You can see there, just as another example, and as a re recap, Copilot policy content type, branding and identity content type, we've got our views 
automatically created in addition to that all documents content type that or the view of all documents there. So there we go. Just a great little hidden gem of using content types when you're adding them to your document libraries. Hope that brings you some value. Thanks for watching. Don't forget, if you want more of this and more in-depth deep, deep dives, group coaching uh, and other, and be involved in a membership with other like-minded people just like yourself, learning all of this sort of stuff, head over to danielanderson.co forward slash mastery. Join the exclusive club there and I'll see you on the inside.